Hey guys, my name is Mark Dressen, you're watching MDTV, and today we're going to be talking about nutrients, about carbohydrates, fats, proteins, alcohol, antioxidants, all of these things, and how did they affect your body. This is a bit slightly different because it's going to be PowerPoint presentation and I'm going to be talking over it, but it's very educational, so if you like this stuff, stay on the line right now, and 3, 2, 1, here we go! What are essential nutrients? A nutrient can be thought of as a substance that is required for nourishment and growth. Now, I want you to think of a banana or a potato, maybe a burger or a glass of milk. All of these foods are made up of different amounts of nutrients, like carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals and water. In the world of nutrition, these are also referred to as the six essential nutrients. In this context, essential means that your body is not able to produce these nutrients through its own natural mechanism or biology. All of the six nutrients have different functions within our bodies from providing energy to repairing and healing the body. But let's now have a closer look at each of the six nutrients. What are carbohydrates? In simple terms, carbohydrates equal energy. Carbohydrates provide a source of energy for us to function and move and are broken down into glucose, which is a form of sugar that our body uses for energy. There are two types of carbohydrates, simple and complex, or sugary and starchy. You can think of the simple carbohydrates as those with the sugary disposition, like fruit, milk, table sugar and honey. The complex starchy carbohydrates are foods like bread, beans, potatoes, grains and vegetables. You might have heard of the term good carbs and bad carbs. What does that mean? This is just the way people in the media at large have categorized the two types of carbohydrates. When they say bad carbs, people are mostly referring to the simple carbohydrates such as table sugar. But why are they labeled as bad? because they're refined and processed and have lost most of their nutritional value, even though they still carry energy in form of calories. Sometimes these are called empty calories. Other examples are white rice or white bread. The term good carbohydrates refer to the non-starchy carbohydrates. These are also referred to as fibrous foods such as vegetables. These help our bodies to break down complex carbohydrates more slowly and release energy in moderate levels into our bloodstream, which will help balance our blood sugar level. Fibro also results in this full feeling we often get after eating our meal, and the amount of fiber in our food despite how full we will feel. Fiber also helps regulate our bowel movements. Examples of good carbs are vegetables that grow mostly above the earth's soil. What are proteins? Proteins are made of smaller molecules called amino acids. These are an essential part of our diet. Why? Many people think that we simply need protein to build muscle, which is one of the functions, but there's more to say about our friend protein. We need and use protein for the formation of structure in the body, like skin and hair, and also muscle. Then also plays a vital role in the transportation of oxygen around the body via our blood. In addition, it helps regulate the body's use of glucose for energy and balances our blood sugar level via the hormone insulin, which is built out of proteins. In some cases, the body also uses protein as energy. So let's have a look at what are good sources of proteins. Well, there are basically two different sources. On the one hand, we've got animal proteins, which can be found in red meat, chicken, eggs, fish, and dairy products. These are also called complete proteins because they consist mostly of all the building blocks or amino acids of a protein. On the other hand, we have plant-based proteins, which can be found in fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and beans. These are referred to as incomplete proteins because these don't have all the essential amino acids which our body needs. That's why if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, you have to make sure to get enough proteins in your diet. Fats are sometimes called lipids. But what are fats? 
The best way to describe fats is to discuss what fats actually do. Fats are the biggest source and store of energy in our body. And our body always uses a mix of carbohydrates and fats as a main source of energy in order to move our body. Insulation refers to the subcutaneous fat. It's the fat right under your skin and it provides insulation whilst preventing the body to lose heat. Fat also has the function of transporting certain essential vitamins through the body, like A, D, E and K. If fat wasn't present, these vitamins wouldn't function properly and this could lead to problems with bone growth, eyesight and nail formation, just to name a few. I guess my point is fat is not bad, like it has been promoted since the 1950s. Fat is not the reason why we are overweight, but more will be discussed later on in this module. Fats can be categorized in two ways, solid and liquid. Solid fats harden at room temperature. The kind of fats we're talking about here are saturated fats like palm oil, coconut oil, and most animal fats, and some dairy products. Liquid fats are simply those that remain in liquid form at room temperature. Examples include olive oil and vegetable oil. I want to point out two very important essential fats or fatty acids, omega-3 and omega-6. Again, essential in this context means that our bodies do not ordinarily produce these substances, but we do need them for our body to function properly. Omega-3. This can be found in oily fish such as salmon, sardines and herrings, or in linseed or flaxseed oil, walnuts and soya beans. Omega-6. This can be found in walnuts, sunflower seeds and oil. Both of these fatty acids help the immune, reproductive and nervous system to function, as well as being involved in the production and repair of cell membranes, which help the cell to obtain optimum nutrition. The benefits of these fatty acids are many. For example, they help to fight infections, they regulate inflammation, blood pressure and body temperature. Most people get enough omega-6 in their diet, especially when they eat meat, but most people are lacking in omega-3. So make sure that you get enough of those in your diet. What are vitamins and why does our body need them? Vitamins are metabolic catalysts that regulate important biochemical reactions in the body. Okay, let's make it a bit more simple. Here's another example. Think of some kids before they're crossing the street and you're taking them by your hand and you both cross the street. After you've reached the other side, you let go and both of you walk safely again. In this example, you were a vitamin helping the kids which were presenting the biochemical reactions in your body. So vitamins can be considered as helpers. So let's see, we've got 13 different vitamins and here's some of the functions in our bodies where we need them to assist us. Some are used for normal growth and development, like vitamin A, which is needed for vision, bone and tooth growth, as well as a healthy immune system. Others are important regulators in how our body uses the energy in food, like most B vitamins, which are involved in the body's metabolism. A few are involved in building, repairing and maintaining healthy tissue, like the vitamin folic acid, which is part of an enzyme which is needed to make your DNA or new cells. One other important factor is that some vitamins are soluble in water and others in fat. That's why it's important to drink water and consume healthy fats, like we just discussed before. What are minerals and what do they do? Minerals are present in all living cells. We can find them in the soil and in water, and they travel through the food chain by being absorbed into the plant that grows on the soil and then is eaten by an animal. So we can find them in plants and animals. Minerals are essential as we're not able to produce them from within. Some of the minerals we need in bigger amounts, like salt, potassium, calcium and magnesium, and others we need in very little amounts, like iron and zinc. Let's have a look at what functions some of the minerals have. Salt is important because it's involved in the regulation of the body's fluids, like water. Iron and copper are very important to build red blood cells, which help to provide the body with oxygen. And zinc keeps our immune system healthy and strong. So let's have a look at what these vitamins and minerals have in common. What are antioxidants? Well, like the word says, anti means no, and oxidants or oxidation means damaging our cells and tissue. 
So antioxidants means no damage or preventing the damage of the body cells. What are antioxidants? They are vitamins and minerals that protect and repair cells from the damage which was caused by oxidation. Oxidation occurs when so-called free radicals are in our body. And these are produced when our body is breaking down food or by environmental exposures to smoking and radiation. Many experts believe this damage plays a part in a number of chronic diseases, including cancer and arthritis. Free radicals can also interfere with your immune system. So fighting off damage with antioxidants helps your immune system to stay strong and making you better able to resist colds, flus and other infections. Let's have a look at some sources of antioxidants in our diet. On the side of vitamins are A, C and E. A can be found in carrots and dairy products, C is in broccoli and most fruits, and a good source of E are vegetable oils and nuts. Minerals which have good antioxidant abilities are copper, which is found in seafood, zinc found in red meat, and selenium which can be found in Brazil nuts and sunflower seeds. I want to point out here that we're able to obtain most of the minerals and vitamins in our diet. So please don't follow the saying, more is better. Some vitamins and minerals in big amounts are able to be toxic to you. And by taking one particular vitamin, because you've heard the benefits of it, might mess up our body's balance of nutrients. Keep in mind, every time you take more of one, others can be used less effectively. Water is known as the source of life. And this is easy to understand when you have a look at how much water our bodies are made up of. The human body consists between 50 to 75% of water. And we're able to live two or three weeks in extreme cases without food, but only one or two days without water. So here's what else water does for us. It transports the nutrients in our blood, and at the same time it gets rid of waste products via our urine, and it also helps the kidneys to function properly. We get most of the water by guess what? Drinking it. It is recommended to drink one and a half liters to two liters a day, but this must be increased when you do exercise. Try to avoid becoming dehydrated, as this will have an immediate effect on all the important functions water has. So here's some tips. When you're thirsty, this is the last instance where your body is telling you that you are dehydrated. So don't wait that long and drink regularly throughout the day. And then cut down on coffee, tea and alcohol, as these act as a diuretic. In other words, they will make you go to the toilet. Let's have a closer look into stimulants and depressants. Caffeine, found in coffee and tea, is a stimulant. And alcohol in drinks like beer and wine is a depressant. But what does stimulant and depressant mean? Stimulant is a drug that speeds up your mental and physical function. Depressant is exactly the opposite of a stimulant. They cause you to slow down cognitive and physical functions. Caffeine is not an essential nutrient, but like alcohol, it plays an important role in many people's eating and drinking habits. In terms of health, it is important to understand what it is and the effect it can have. Caffeine is not stored and does not stay within your bloodstream but it is removed from the body within a few hours of consumption. Then it increases the fat breakdown. That means it helps breaking down fat, which is transported in your blood to your muscle, where it then can be used as energy. This effect has been tested on sports people and some studies reporting an increase of endurance from anywhere between 7 to even 51%. Also, it's a diuretic, meaning drinking tea, coffee and caffeinated drinks such as cola and eating chocolate will all cause you to excrete more water than you normally would. This is because these items all contain caffeine, and caffeine is a diuretic. A diuretic interferes with the kidney's control of water balance, forcing the body to excrete more water than it normally would. And then it's a stimulant. Caffeine acts as a psychoactive drug, which means that it has the effect of altering brain functions resulting in temporary changes in perception, mood, consciousness, and behavior. It acts primarily on the central nervous system, having the effect of temporarily resisting drowsiness and restoring awareness. As we're not dependent on caffeine, I would recommend to reduce the intake as much as possible for you. Why? Because our body's a balance seeker, and if we stimulate it, it will need to compensate itself. This can't be healthy in the long run. Also, our bodies are getting more resistant to caffeine over time, 
meaning that you will need more to get the same effect. Let's move on to alcohol. What is alcohol? Many people do not realize alcohol can be classified as a drug. Under this category, it's the most widely used drug in the world. It should be highlighted that alcohol itself is not a nutrient, but it has an energy value and must be taken into account when looking at your food intake. However, large quantities can lead to the following diseases such as cancer, strokes, hypertension, and coronary heart disease. It is important to realize it takes a long time to completely clear alcohol from your system and it puts a strain onto your liver. It is possible to clear alcohol from your body at approximately one unit per hour starting from the time you started drinking it. The exact figure is 18 milligrams of alcohol per hour. And then there are the depressing effects of alcohol. The ethanol found in alcohol is a psychoactive drug and is a central nervous system depressant. After the initial rush, high levels of ethanol in the bloodstream get carried to the brain. Being a central nervous system depressant, it slowly starts losing the nervous system control over the body's other organs and functions. This is what causes the loss of coordination and balance. It also causes the heart rate to slow down which imparts the feeling of dizziness or drowsiness, followed by hangover. Cut down on alcohol as much as possible. Our bodies do not need it. Okay, so I hope this video was beneficial for you and you learned something. You know now what nutrients are and how they affect your body and how you can use this new knowledge in your day-to-day -day life. It would be great if you let me know how you get on with this new knowledge in the comment box below. Let me know what you thought about this video. And also, you know, if you did like it, then hit the like button right now. And again, you know, there's this nice, nice little uh, red thing up here, somewhere over, sorry, here, called subscribe. So hit that button right now and this stuff gets straight into your inbox and we don't have to worry finding me again on the internet. So I'll see you soon.